What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with OnePlus Nord and 35G tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with the OnePlus Nord and 35G and I'm really looking forward to showing you all my favorite features for this device here in this video. Now the first thing I want to show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera app here on the device and you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system and all you have to do is just double press in the power button. So let's try that right now. And there we go, it pulled up the camera app and again you can do this from anywhere. You can even be in the app drawer for example and if you double press in that button it'll pull up the camera. Now with the OnePlus Nord and 35G, we do get the traditional Android 3 button navigation here as the default. And I know for many people, they do prefer that. However, I do recommend at least trying out gesture-based navigation if you've never used it before. Now to switch the phone over to gesture-based navigation, all you have to do is just pull down the shade here, go to the settings icon up top, then from there, go to search, type in nav, and you'll see right there system navigation. So go there, and you can see that we actually have a lot of different options here for various customizations. Now the first switch that you can make is that you can actually flip around the buttons that we have. So if you want to have the back button on the right side and recent apps button on the left side, you can make that switch just like that, and then now you can see that the buttons have been flipped around. So this might be more convenient, for example, if you're right-handed and you find yourself mostly using the back button rather than the recent apps button, then I feel like doing things in this way does make a bit more sense. But then from here, we have another option, and that is gestures. So when you select gestures, you'll see right here that there is an option for a tutorial on how to use it. You're welcome to do that, but I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. So I'm gonna go to cancel, and then you'll see that instead of having those three buttons, we now have nothing here at the bottom. So if we swipe up, it'll take us home. If we swipe partially up, it'll take us to our recent apps. And then if we swipe from the side, it'll take us back. Now, if you've used other Android phones in the past with gesture-based navigation, you might notice that those typically do have a small line here at the bottom. Now, by default, when you set gestures here on the phone, at least with the Nord N35G, there's no line. So you can see that high gesture guide bar is enabled by default. So I'm gonna disable that, and you'll see that after doing that, we do get the line here at the bottom. But overall, when it comes to actual usability of this feature, it really makes no difference. So I feel like there's not really much of a reason to enable the guide bar itself. In addition to that, there's some other options here as well, and you're welcome to try these out. You can see that if you don't want the phone to actually vibrate on back navigation, you can disable that. There's also the ability here to easily switch to the previous app with a gesture. Miss touch prevention is already enabled, which is good. And then also we do have options here to adjust the sensitivity of the gestures. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to take a screenshot with the OnePlus Nord N35G. There's actually three different methods that I want to show you on how to do this. Now the first way to take a screenshot is very simple. All you have to do is hold the volume down and power button for about a second. And just like that, it takes the screenshot. Then from there, you can share it if you want to. Now the next way to take a screenshot is to take three fingers and swipe down on the display. And you can see it took the screenshot just like that. And then finally, the last option you have here is that you can simply place three fingers on the display. And when it takes a screenshot that way, we actually have the ability to take a partial screenshot. So you can pick a portion of the display here, and you can even pick certain shapes if you want to. Now with the OnePlus Nord N35G, we have a very large 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery. So for the most part, you should expect to get very good battery life here from the phone. That being said though, I do wanna show you some cool ways to further prolong the battery life here on the phone. So we're gonna pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, you're gonna type in battery, and then you're gonna go down here to where it says power saving mode. So go there, and you can see that we have a lot of different options here available. Now the first one is the regular power saving mode. So if we enable that, basically what it's gonna do is cut out a lot of different background tasks and further optimize the phone so that it mostly focuses on saving the phone's battery. Now in exchange for that, you should notice that the phone won't perform quite as well, but that is a compromise that will get you longer battery life. Now you can see also enabled here is that once you recharge the phone past 90%, power saving mode will disable. You can also pick it to turn on at a specific battery level. So if you want the power saving mode to activate when the phone gets down to 15%, you can have that happen automatically. And then also there are default optimizations. So you can see a list of them here. And basically when power saving mode's enabled, it'll reduce screen brightness, 
it'll change auto screen off time to 15 seconds, it'll disable background sync, and then lower the screen refresh rate. So if there are certain options here that you don't want to be disabled when the phone is in power saving mode, then at least you do have the ability to further customize that here. And then finally, we have super power saving mode. And you can see, for example, if I enable that, it'll make the phone last two days, 10 hours, and 24 minutes. So that's quite a bit of time. So I'll enable that, and you can see that your system performance will be reduced, and you'll only be able to run a few apps at a time. So I'll enable that, and then now it's switching into that mode, and you can see that there's no location access, and in addition to that, we have a very simplified version of the operating system here. But in exchange for that, the phone's gonna last for a very long time. But you can see that there's only a few icons here, phone calls, messages, and you can also add other apps as well. Now, if you're curious what your phone's battery health is, you can go to the main settings, then go down to where it says battery, and then right here, you can go down to battery health, and it'll say right here what your phone's battery health is. Now, since this is a brand new device, you can see the maximum capacity is 100%. However, as the phone is used over a period of time and the battery inevitably degrades, you'll see an updated percentage here showing the actual battery capacity. Now, there's not a whole lot that you can do with that information because that's just the way things are at that point. It's not like you can change the maximum battery capacity once it dips below 100% unless you actually take the phone in for a battery swap which you most likely won't be doing, but at least it will give you an idea that if you notice that your phone's battery isn't holding up as well, you can then see what the actual battery health is that you have here on the phone. Now, there are a few things that you can do to further protect the battery capacity of the phone as time goes on, and one of those is wise charging. So you can see to slow down battery aging, intelligent services learns your charging habits, and waits to finish charging past 80% until just before you start using your device. So you can set that to work at night, all day, or have it be off. Also under this main battery settings area, you can go down here to more settings, and you can see there's another option here for high performance mode. So the system always operates in a high performance mode, but it will increase extra power consumption. Now the next thing I wanna show you is a feature called App Cloner. So in the main settings area here, you can go down to where it says apps, and once you're there, you can see there's an option for App Cloner. And basically what this does is, it'll create app clones and run them at the same time. So there are only certain apps that are compatible with this, but essentially, you can create copies of these applications. So for example, I know on Snapchat, it doesn't officially support multiple accounts. Now Instagram does, so it's interesting that it's on here, but I still appreciate that we do have that option. But basically, if I enable Snapchat, for example, for App Cloner, it'll download a duplicate of Snapchat so that I can have one Snapchat app on one account and then another on a different account. So that's a really awesome feature and certainly something that you cannot do with iOS. Now heading back over to the main settings here in the phone, if you go down here, you will see an option that says special features. And there's a lot of good stuff here. So going there, you can see that there's a whole list of different options, but I'll start off by showing you split screen. So with split screen, you can basically swipe up with three fingers to enter this mode. Now to try this feature, you have to pull up the first app. So I'm gonna use the web browser here. I'm gonna swipe up. And then from there, you can now pick the secondary application. So for this example, I'm gonna choose the calculator. And then after doing that, you can see we easily have a split screen here with the calculator down below and the web browser up top. I can also adjust the divide here, so if I want one app to take up more space than another, I can do that, or vice versa. And then if I'm done with this mode and I want one of these apps to completely take over, then I can drag completely. Now the next option on that list is called Floating Window. So I'm gonna pull up an app for this example, go to my Recent Apps button right there, then I'm gonna tap on the three dots in the upper right corner, and then I'm gonna go to Floating Window, and then now you can see that we basically have the app floating here. Now, if I wanna make that floating window larger, I can tap on the app, and then just like that, it's now a more usable size here. But basically, I can use that app on top of the whole operating system, or I can pull up another app in the background. Then to get out of this, I can tap on the X in the upper right corner, and then now it disappears. Now, there's also Smart Sidebar in that Advanced Features menu. So Smart Sidebar is not enabled by default. However, I feel like this is a very useful feature. So I'm gonna enable that right now, and then you'll see after doing that, we now have this side notch in the upper right corner. So I'm gonna swipe over on that, and basically you can see quick access to some various abilities the phone can do, such as screenshots, screen recording, translations, but then also there are some applications here as well. But then from here I can make further customizations, I can go to edit, and I can pick from a variety of different apps here in the phone to then put them in the sidebar. And then there's also simple mode. 
so you'll get larger text, bigger icons, and louder sounds. So this might be ideal for people that are not very techy, but essentially you just get a very basic version of the operating system. Now with the OnePlus Nord N35G, we have a very large 6.72 inch display. Now that's great in many ways, but when it comes to using the phone with just one hand, it can be pretty much impossible to reach all portions of the operating system. Now thankfully OnePlus has thought of a really cool solution to this, and that's called one-handed mode. Now to get to this, we're gonna go to the settings, then from there, we're gonna go down to additional settings, and then you'll see right there, one-handed mode. But to use this, we'll have to first switch the phone over to gesture-based navigation. So go to system navigation, choose gestures, and for this example, I'm actually going to enable the gesture guide bar. We're gonna go back here, and then you'll see right there, one-handed mode under the main additional settings, and then I'll enable that. And then now you can go to whatever app you wanna use one-handed mode in. So I'm gonna to go to the web browser and then I can just swipe down on that little line and then now it moves the whole display down here so that I can reach the upper portions of it. Now back over to this additional settings area, you can see that we also have an option here for gestures and motions. So going there, there's a lot of good stuff and I'll demonstrate some of it for you. But basically we can go to screen off gestures and this one's really cool. So you can double tap to wake or turn off screen. So I'll enable that. And then basically to turn on the screen, you double tap, and then turn off the screen, you double tap again. And then there's a few more I wanna show you, so I'll enable these. So draw an O to open the camera, and then draw a V to turn the flashlight on or off. So we'll try the camera first. There we go, I drew an O, and now it pulled up the camera, and then I'll draw a V, and it turned on the flashlight. And there's even more options related to this. You can even pick certain actions to go along with drawing certain shapes. Then further down here, there's more abilities. So raise to wake, lift to ear to answer calls, auto switch to receiver, and then flip to mute incoming calls. So it would work like that. And then also we have air gestures here. So control your phone with hand gestures without touching the screen. So this might be something worth giving a try, especially if you are someone that's really into doing different gestures. Then from here, we can go over to display and brightness. And then you can see there's an option for dark mode. So this especially comes in handy later at night or maybe you're at a movie theater, but basically you'll switch the phone into dark mode. And if you want to, you can even pick a schedule for that. And there are even further dark mode customizations that you can set up here. Also going down here, there's screen color mode. So you can see that this is the default right now, but you can pick a more natural display tone if you want to, and you can even make things warmer or cooler. So a lot of different customizations that can be made there. We'll go back. There's also eye comfort, so if you want less blue light, basically, this especially comes in handy later in the day, you can do that, and you can even pick black and white for the display itself. So if you don't want any color here, that is an option. You can also adjust font size and the fonts themselves. You can even change the display size, so if you want everything to be a little bit larger or smaller, you can do that. And then also there's adaptive sleep. So with that enabled, it'll basically use the front facing camera to see if you're actually looking at the phone or not. And if you are, then it won't put the phone to sleep. And then finally there's screen refresh rate. So with this phone, we do have a very fast 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you can easily select that here. Now that is already enabled by default, but if for some reason you want 60 Hertz instead, everything won't run nearly as smoothly, but in return for that, you should expect to get better battery life. So that is cool that they give us the option here to actually customize that refresh rate. But this concludes my video on OnePlus Nord and 35G, tips and tricks, and hidden features. I hope you learned something new today and enjoyed this video, but this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one.